It's another edition of Time About the Movies, and today we're taking a look at the movies of March 24th, 1995. Six movies to look at today, so let's get right on into it. We'll start off with the biggest new release of the weekend, which is Damon Wayans in the military comedy Major Pain. So this is essentially a loose remake of a Charlton Heston movie from back in 1955 called The Private War of Major Benson, and... As you can tell from the trailer, uh, Damon Wayans plays a character named Major Benson, Major Benson Payne. And, um, you know, compared to his other movie he did, Blank Man, this is de a definite improvement over that film. Uh, mostly because this is a character that's actually pretty funny, even though he's kind of a one-note character. Um, I think maybe the biggest problem with Blank Man was that they made him too obnoxious. They made the... There's, there was nothing really funny in that particular movie to make that character stand out more, but... This movie, it's a simple concept here. You have this, you have Damon Wayans playing this really into his job Marine, and he basically has to figure, has to recruit the do these. Uh, he has to recruit these new kids from this from this group of young cadets to victory in a competition. So it's kind of like as, in a way, it's kind of like the tip of a generic kind of summer camp movie because you know it ends with a big competition to prove that they're the best of the best and. There's definitely a lot of elements in there, but on it, like I said before, what makes it work is the comedy. I think the comedy is a lot funnier here, and it is because Damon Wayans puts a lot of effort into this. Like I said, he plays a very obnoxious character and an over-the-top character, but it's a fun role for him that he actually gets a lot of good material out of. There's a lot of good funny moments with him in there, and I think everybody in here does a pretty good job. The cast overall is great. You got Karen Parsons from Fresh Prince. Uh, Michael Ironside's also in here, William Hickey, a young Orlando Brown, a young Chris Owen from American Pie, uh, Damon's son Damian Dante Wayne's also in here, um, who went on to star in movies of his own. Um, it's a pretty fun movie. I, rem is, I remember watching it, not really going into it with a whole lot of expectations, because I kind of thought this character was going to be kind of a one-note character, but like I said before, the jokes actually do work, and there are a lot of funny moments in the movie movie that actually do work. They're very funny, they're very well done, and it works for a lot of reasons. It, it's a very solid film. It's nothing too grand, it's nothing too amazing, but it definitely delivers what it promises. It's a very fun comedy. I'd highly recommend checking it out. It's one of Damon Wayne's. it's actually one of Damon Wayne's best leading comedies that I've seen him in, and uh, even though he's done a ton of great movies and TV shows, this is probably one of his best ones where he's leading a com um, in a comedic leading role. So, like I said, highly recommend checking out Major Pain. So, uh, well, with that said, let's move on to the next movie that we have here, and that is Kathy Bates and Jennifer Jason Lee starring in Dolores Claiborne. So when I first heard about this movie, I thought it was a Stephen King movie. It was a movie based off of one of his books, and that trailer doesn't really give you an indication of it, which probably means that... Stephen King didn't want his name attached to it, so they, this is one of the movies that he took his name off of. But as we saw before, he'll put his name on something stupid like The Mangler. But this movie, nah, don't even worry about, don't even bother putting it on there. But um, but most of the, but like most of the movies that Stephen King doesn't put his name on, this movie actually ends up being pretty good. It's a different kind of a horror story, like. It's not the typical Stephen King type horror story. It's more of a story of ev uh, everyday horror story because you're dealing with stuff like alcoholism, murder, wife beating, child abuse, just like all throughout this movie. And you get two wonderful actresses really putting it there all into this. Like Kathy Bates delivers another fantastic performance in this movie. It's just as it's about as good as her performance in Misery, and she's done a lot of great movies, but this is definitely one of the strongest performances I've ever seen her in. Jennifer Jason Lee is also great here too, playing the daughter. There's a great cast overall. You've got um, uh, Christopher Plummer in the tra in the trailer. He's very good in here as well. David Strathian, a very good actor. Uh, Eric Bogosian from Talk Radio. John C. Riley in one of his early film roles. It's a very good, well-made film. It's a nice psychological thriller. And it does what a good psychological thriller should do. It should keep your investment throughout the course of the movie. It's going to make you wonder what the hell is going on. Is this woman really guilty about what she did? Is there more behind this? And the movie does a very good job of keeping your expect keeping you involved in the film. It keeps your expectations on track to see how this is going to turn out in the end. It's a phenomenal film, and it, unfortunately, it was one of those movies that didn't get the reception it deserved. It got nice. It got a lot of good reviews, great reviews for both Bates and Lee, but the movie didn't make any money at the box office. It was, 
Actually, no, no, I take that back. It did make money at the box office, but most people kind of forgot about it after it did because most of the t the film didn't have a whole lot of promotion to it, and yet it still made over fifty million dollars worldwide over a thirteen million dollar budget, which was which is going to work for hey, that's good enough for anybody. But um, but yeah, like I said, it's a well made film, a very underrated thriller, written by Tony Gilroy, directed by Taylor Hackford. Fantastic film, maybe one of the b best underrated Stephen King adaptations of all time. I've, is I can't recommend it enough. If you haven't seen Dolores Claiborne, definitely check it out. And again, you will not be disappointed by it. So, uh, with that said, let us move on to the next movie that we have here, and that is Tall Tale, The Unbelievable Adventures of Pecos Bill from Disney. Um, I mean, they, honestly, they all get equal billing in this movie, honestly, and uh, this is one of those movies that I remember seeing, ne seeing the previous one, never seeing the movie until much later on down the road, and um, it wasn't a terrible movie. It was one that I, when I finally saw it, I was just kind of like, it could have been something interesting, but like uh, maybe as a kid, I probably would have liked it a little bit more. But I do like a lot of the ideas they have in here. You got all these folk legends, Pecos Bill, not just Pecos Bill, Paul Bunyan, and John Henry, but they also throw in these other names in here, like Calamity Jane's also in this movie, played by Captain O'Hara. And you got a phenomenal cast in here as well. You got, uh, as I mentioned, Swayze, Oliver Platt as Paul Bunyan, uh, Roger Aaron Brown as great as John Henry, Stephen Lang's in here, Nick Stahl, Scott Glenn, Jared Harris, um, William H. Macy has a role in here, so does Burgess Meredith. And for a movie that was sitting on the shelf for over a year, this actually was filmed in 1993 and finished completion in 93 and didn't even get a release. Like, maybe Disney kind of thought that this movie wasn't going to make a ton of money and I guess they were kind of right. It only made back $8 million off of the $32 million budget it had. But like I said before, it's not a terrible movie, but there's nothing really all that amazing about it. I thought it was okay for what it was. But in the end, what did it really amount to in the end? Like, what was the whole purpose of the movie's existence by that by the time the movie ended? Um, you didn't really get a whole lot of it. I mean, like I said, the performances are okay. Some of the action is very nicely done. There are some good moments in there that really were like... Okay, there are moments here where it is redeemable. Like, these are nice moments, and there's a lot of good moments in the film. Is it one that I'd watch over and over again? Probably not, but I'm glad I saw it the one time, because it was something that I didn't really have a whole lot of interest seeing it, seeing it as a kid, but as I watched it old, now that I'm older, I'm kind of like, okay, I could definitely see where you guys were going with this. And But at the same time, like I said, it's nothing grand, it's nothing too spectacular, but I'm glad I saw it the one time I did. Could have been a whole lot better, absolutely, but for what it was, I kind of enjoyed it for what it was. It's a one to, As a one-time watch, I thought it was all right, but it not, it's not something I'm going to watch over and over again. So uh, That is Tall Tale, so let's move on to the next movie that we have here, and that is Linus Roach from The Dark Knight and Law and Order, uh, Batman Begins in Law and Order, I should say, starring in Priest. Never saw the movie, but basically you have a Roman Catholic priest struggling to deal with two difficulties that precipitate a, a, a crisis of faith. Um, like I said, Linus Roach from Batman Begins is in this movie as the main priest. Tom Wilkinson, who was also in Batman Begins, is also in here as well, as is Robert Carlyle, who's in Train Spotting. Um, like I said, I haven't seen the movie before, so I can't really comment on it too much, but uh, it just really, there's just nothing really here that really says, I need to see this movie, but I mean... Uh, some things of noteworthiness, uh, Catholic, uh, Catholic organizations in the United States were in an uproar over the planned release of the film on Mir from Miramax on Easter weekend, calling the film smut, blasphemous, and sacrilegious, staging a nationwide boycott of Disney and wanted Michael Eisner to be fired. And New Jersey actually received threats, bomb threats, warnings against the screening of the film. But, um, I mean, let's be honest, the church will go after any movie that badmouths them or says something, that says things that they don't... I mean, that's kind of that's kind of the expected with that movie, but bomb threats over this, really? Like, I mean, I don't know. I don't know what I don't know. Like I said, I haven't seen the movie, so I can't really say too much more about it. But bomb threats over this movie, like, I don't know. Like, like I said, it doesn't look anything too engaging or interesting. Maybe it's more of a a piece to show that hey, these guys that that you met, never heard of are actually good actors that should, should be seen in other movies because. We've seen him do good acting in other movies, Linus Roach and Tom Wilkinson, for example, and Robert Carlyle. But, um, yeah, other than that, though, I've got nothing else for you because I haven't seen this, so I can't really comment on it too much. Maybe it's good that I don't comment on it, so. 
But uh, anyway, let's move on to the next movie, and that is Oliver Platt and Jerry Lewis in Funny Bones. So this is looking like a movie that's trying to be kind of like another Mr. Saturday Night or Funny People that is mostly comedy, but it needs to be more dramatic. And this movie, I don't know, this movie feels like they're trying to combine both of them and just can't decide which one should be over the one, which, which one should be over the one because it feels like it's 50-50, and the 50-50 that they have there is not really anything that interesting or exciting. I mean, I mean Jerry Lewis can play dr dramatic. I mean, we've seen him starring in more dramatic com dramedies like... um. The King of Comedy was a good example from about, what, 13 years before this movie came out. And uh, you got Oliver Platt, who's a great actor. You've got uh, Oliver Reed involved in this as well. Richard Griffiths, uh, Leslie Caron. Just some notable names in here and some good ideas. But this movie doesn't really feel like anything too intriguing or exciting, honestly. I mean, it doesn't really feel like there's a lot there. And you bring you bring in Jerry Lewis, you got to have something for him to do. Do I? They can make him be funny or actually show some of his dramatic chops that he's proven to have before in the past, but I don't know. I haven't seen this movie either, so I can't really comment on it too much. So that's pretty much all I got for you on this one. So that's Funny Bones. Let's move on to the last movie that we have here. And uh, we'll be quick on this one too because I haven't seen this one either. And it, this was another one I had to struggle to find footage for. It's uh, a film called Bar Girls. So like I said, I haven't seen this one, so I can't really say too much about it. But um, uh, the it's basically a lesbian themed romantic comedy where you follow these li these uh, gay women in Los Angeles who socialize at a local lesbian bar, simply called Girl Bar, and the hijinks ensue. I guess. I mean, I really don't know have anything more to say about this one because I haven't seen it. But um, uh, reviews for it were not that strong from what I saw from there. But um, uh. Cher's, da Cher's daughter was in the movie, uh, Chas Bono, Chastity Bono, I keep remembering that she tr she became a she became a man, Chas Bono, but um, that's the only thing I really know about this movie, is the fact that she's in there, and this is a, this is a cu couple of, one of several lesbian-themed comedies we got in this time period, because there was another one that came out this year, very same year, the, um, I can't remember the name of it, just found it, The Incredibly True Adventures of Two Girls in Love, which... I have seen, and I think that's a, I think that's actually a pretty good movie, but uh, we're still a couple of months away from that one, so I'll delve more into that one when we get to that movie. But um, other than that, that's pretty much all I had to say about this one, so uh, Bar Girls. And with that said, we wrap up this edition of Time About the Movies, and we'll jump into the final weekend of March on next week's the next episode we do, which will be next week, uh, which will be uh, one of my favorite comedies of all time, Tommy Boy. We also have Lori Petty starring in Tank Girl, uh, the Family Adventure, Born to be Wild. We also have Jefferson in Paris and Ballot Measure 9. So we'll look at all five of those movies on tomorrow's show. But until then, thank you very much for watching. And if you want to see more videos like this, please hit the playlist on the next page. Check out the previous episode. And I'll see you guys tomorrow for another episode. So thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. And until then, as always, take care.